So, I thought I'd show you my, my latest tin can build, um, which is a four string mandolin. The uh, reason I built a four string mandolin was because I've, I've been wanting a four string mandolin for quite some time, but most of them are, are solid electrics. Uh, or or very expensive, so uh, I thought, why not? Why not make one? Uh, so the specs of this thing and how I built it. Well, first of all, I used a, a tin can with some cute little geese there. Don't know if that will affect the tone in any way, but they are um, the neck. which is uh, oak and fingerboard which is a birch fingerboard uh, which only has uh, 12 frets uh, the reason for that is that I found when you're building uh, instruments out of tin cans uh, the further up the neck you come the, the more well less sustain and, and the tone starts getting very m metallic and uh, and, and sharp and not, not very pleasant so I felt that 12 frets was more than enough I've also made this little curve which sort of slopes upwards as well um, what I did with this one was that I added a, a zero fret which I'm, I'm really pleased with uh, the nut is this piece of rosewood which is this there to guide the strings across across the knot so I think I'll be doing a lot more of zero fret instruments from now on uh, the headstock is uh, slotted one slot to house these mandolin tuners which are all right it's an old set I had kicking around um, I thought I was being very original and, and clever on doing a mirror of, of this but I, I realized when I was finished that what I've actually created is something that looks like a, a half a guitar neck well, I've chopped a guitar neck right into uh, which I haven't of course but still makes it a little unique uh, the bridge is a piece of oak and the loop, uh, the holding of the loop end strings is once again um, the ends of, of bicycle spokes and the reason is because they are uh, very durable so they're not going to bend uh, or, or snap like a, a screw might do or something um, the construction is, is a neck through the neck goes in there and out there you can see inside there and the the top of the tin can is not actually touching the neck it's from here to about here I've scalloped it out uh, to give it as much movement as possible the strings are brand new so they might be going out of tune while I'm talking here of, of all the builds I've done this one is is definitely one that I'm, I'm happiest with when it comes to the feel I managed to get the neck profile just the way I wanted it. I've got a few coats of, of clear varnish on here and uh, no grain filler. Uh, it's a little bit of an, a knot there, but I thought that sort of added to the character. It's it's a good. It's not a bad knot. So uh, no position markers, which I like to keep it there. And, you know, takes a little getting used to finding a way around and the advantage of building a tin can instrument is that once you've actually made the neck you can swap tins around fairly easily if, if you don't like the sound of the tin you've got you just find another one and, and stick the neck in maybe I have to do a few modifications but it's, it's a fairly simple procedure um, and I
quite, I like, I must say, I like the tone of this. I wasn't too sure about this can when I used it. I thought that the, being a rather soft, soft top, if you want, or thin, it was going to make a lot of buzzing and, and horrible noise, but it's got quite a warm sound. And I, despite only having four strings, it, it, it still sounds like a mandolin. And there is no angle to the headstock since I have the, the slotted arrangement. So it's, it's just a, a square piece of oak that I've carved, it's tapered to be narrower here, and uh, shaped the neck. So pleased with this one. So there it is. Thanks for watching, take care, bye bye.